Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening. The, um, we're holding right now in the uh, the period that's uh, called the Shiva de Nechamta, where we read the seven Haftoras of Consolation, uh, trying to uh, pick up the pieces and draw strength for the future. And we have to uh, talk a little bit. I mean, obviously, every Haftorah and every Parsha that we read in course of these next seven weeks has a special character and a special flavor to it, another special message of consolation, so I seven weeks of it. Um, <clears throat> we will talk about also that's a very interesting proportion. There's three Haftoras that we read during the three weeks of the Ben Mitzorim, Shimu, Divrei, and Chazon. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, the three Haftoras which uh, talk about the impending... Uh, Doom that was going to be full Am Yisrael. and the um, and then there's a seven cons- seven of consolation, and that's something also interesting to look into the proportion three and seven, three of uh, Puronius, three of uh, hard times, and seven of good times, you know, of, which will should come speedily in our days, and we'll, we'll talk about that also. Uh, the uh, the parsha opens up in this week via Akev Tishmoon. Right, you know, and at the heel you will listen. So Rashi uh, go, taking the literal taich, you know, the little translation of heel as in, you know, you know, the thing at the bottom of the foot. So there are certain mitzvahs that Adam Doshba cave of, there's certain mitzvahs that people take lightly and they're so important and it's it's uh, you know, it's warning us to take even the mitzvahs that people may, you know, walk on. Uh, more seriously, uh, and we're going to get back to that, you know, but the Medrash takes a, a different approach. The Medrash talks about via Akev, Akev Miloshin at the end, you know, uh, that, um, you know, if, uh, you know, Rosh, right, would mean at the beginning, like Rosh Hashanah, so by contrast, you know, uh, Akev, the heel, could mean the end, right? Now, the truth is, we found this earlier in Chumash, way back, way, way, way back. And want to take a guess? Found the idea of Akev meaning like the end. Akev meaning the end, um, like Rashi, uh, like uh, like the Medrash rather uh, says. <coughs> Parshas, Parshas told us. Right, the, uh, so, uh, you know, Yitzhak Avinu has, Yitzhak Avinu has two kids, right? Esav comes out first, then comes out the second guy. Viodo Ochezes Ba'akev Esav, right? His, his foot is holding the heel of Esav, right? Vayikrash Mo Yaakov, so they call him Yaakov. Now, I don't get it, right? Yaakov was doing the holding, Onto Esav's heel. They should have called him Ochaz. Mm-hmm. Right? He's holding, right? The heel, the heel belongs to Esav. Right? Call him Yaakov. Call him Ochaz, because Yoro is holding on to the, the heel. Was, so there's no doubt in my mind that Rashi is bothered by that question. And Rashi brings an interesting uh, Chazal. Ba'akev Esav. On the words, Ba'akev Esav. The heel of Esav. Simon. And this is a sign. Shein's a maspik ligmor malchuso achza omed v'notoy meno. He is not going to finish his kingdom until this one comes and takes it from him. Right. So it's very interesting. You know, it's, uh, it sounds nice, but we have to break down the words. Ligmor mal. He's not going to finish his kingdom. I don't know what that means. I have to understand. So he's not going to finish. So akev means like to finish. Uh, he's not going. He's going to want to finish, and then, right? Ligmor Malchuso, and then Yaakov is going to come and take it from him. So, meaning, say, Yaakov takes Esav's heel away. He takes Esav, but what the the thing that he takes from Esav, politically speaking, is Gemar Malchuso, the finality of his kingdom, which something which needs a needs definition. Yeah. So. You know, uh, there's a famous Gemara in uh, Marcus. Everyone knows it because uh, Marcus is a Sia Masechta, right? Uh, right? I mean, <laughs> every year, nine, right? Nine days. It's a nine days Masechta, right? Uh, only 24 daf, right? And uh, interestingly enough, it's uh, 
really at the very, very final Gemara in Marcus uh, has a, uh, a nine days message. It says the Gemara, right, famous story that the Kfaya Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Lozim Azar, Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Akiva, Malchum Ederech, so Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Lozim Azar, and Rabbi Shua, and Rabbi Kiva walking in the road, Vakol, Shomu, Kol, Hamona, Shoromi, Mipalta, Baruch, Gmev, Vesumil, they heard the, you know, the Romans parting even from a great distance, like they were having such a wild party, able to hear it like uh, an amazing distance away. Vitrilu uh, Bochen <clears throat> so he started crying. Rabbi Akiva Mesachek, but Rabbi Akiva was laughing. Omulom Ibnata Mesachek, they ask him, Why are you laughing? Omulom Vata Ibnay Mata and Bochen, you guys, why are you guys crying? Omulom, so they told him, I love Kushim, Mishtachim, Latsoim, Makachi, Vavos Kuchim, Yoshi Betach, Vahashkait, Vonu Base, Havam Ragel, Kainu, Soruf, Baesh. Below Nifke, these people, these primitives, right, that they, uh, they worship idols and they burn incense to, uh, to the stars and they're sitting, you know, they're sitting pretty, you know, tranquil and the house of, uh, you know, the house of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is burnt, you know, as, uh, we shouldn't cry. Omar Ham, so he told him, L'kach ani metzach, that's the very reason that I am laughing. Mal over Ratsano Kach, La Ose Ratsanachas Kam Vakama, if God give, makes it so good right? for the people that transgress his will, how much more so for us that we keep what he wants. So if you know, the Ovre Avera you know, gets have such good lives, we're going to have much better lives. It's a Kalva Homer. Right? It's, it's no responses recorded over here. But then it goes on to say another, uh, another story. Shuv pam achas hayu olim li Yerushalayim. They were once of these same a group of Tanoim were on their way to Yerushalayim. Came to Yigil the Harat Sofim when they reached Harat Sofim from which you could see the Temple Mount. So koru big dayam. So they ripped their rent their garments. Came to Yigil the Harabais ro shua yotzer beis kotche karoshim when they reached where they uh, the uh, where they could see Harabais they saw. You know, I guess when they got close to the Harabais, they saw a fox come out from the base coach at Karoshim. They started crying, and Rabbi Kiva started laughing. They asked him, Why are you laughing? They asked him, Well, why are you guys crying? They told him, The place, you know, which it says in the Pasuk Vazar, you must anyone who's not a Kohen, and he goes in there. You know, uh, you know, deserves death. Vakshav shulim hilchubo, and now the foxes run there. Lo nifkem, we shouldn't cry. Omalem lekach ani mitzachik. That's the very reason why I'm laughing. Dixiv, as the pasuk says, vaidili edim nimanim esuria koyim vezcharyo ben yevarechiyo. Right, uh, the the navi shai says that uh, he got a nevoah. I take for me uh, two trustworthy witnesses, Uriah Cohen and Zechariah ben yevarechiyo. Umachi mainyan Uriah etzo Zechariah. Uriah b'mikdash rishon v'zchar b'yosheni. What? What do these two gentlemen have to do with each other? They didn't live in the same era. Uriah was uh, was lived by the first temple period, and Zechariah was you know Chagi Zechariah Malachi. They were the last uh, neviim that ushered in the second temple period. Ella tola kasev v'osher zchar b'yosher shel Uriah. Right, but rather it's coming to teach you that the prophecies of Zechariah is intertwined with the prophecies of Uriah. Buriah Ksiv, by Uriah it says, Lachem biglauchem tzion tzad etacharashio. He gives Am Yisrael Musar, right, that because of you now, Tzion will be like a, it'll be plowed over, Tzion, the Harabais, maybe it will be plowed over like a field. It's going to be laid desolate, plowed over like a field. B'zcharia Ksiv, but in Zcharia is the Nevuah of the Geula, of the redemption, all Yeshu Skenim is Kenos Brochovas Yerushalayim, that yet, you know, the old and the, uh, and the old will sit, uh, you know, together with the young, in the streets of Yerushalayim. Ancho is coming to Vosso Shal Uriah, Esi Misar Shalot is coming to Vosso Shazhar, until I did not see with my own eyes the fulfillment of the prophecy of Uriah, of the Chayn Tzion, Sode Techarash, that the Harabai should be plowed over. I was afraid I won't see the Nevu of Zechariah, which he talks about the Gula, upheld either. Akshav Shedis Kaima Nevuaso Uriah. Now that the prophecy of Uriah has been fulfilled, 
right? Because, you know, we see that uh, uh, Harabais has been plowed over. Now we can be assured that the Nevoah of Sechari, of the Gula, will be fulfilled. So listen to how the Gemara ends off. Boloshon haze amrulo. With this, this, the following is what they told him. Akiva nicham tanu, Akiva nicham tanu. Akiva, you've consoled us. Akiva, you've consoled us. So first of all, Chazal, they, they're very like, Boloshon haze amrulo, right? That there was a code here, right? Chazal drop you a code. It's not just, you know, not approximating what they said. Boloshon haze amrulo. They told him this. Akiva nicham tanu, Akiva nicham tanu, right? Rabbi Kiva's name is a part of it, right? Akiva Nihamtanu, Akiva, Akev, as we're going to discuss, right? And, and it's said doubly, Akiva Nihamtanu, Akiva Nihamtanu, right? Whereas by the very, very first uh, story, there's no response recorded. He explains to him why they're laughing, and then there's, a, there's no reply on their part. So I guess we have to ask, uh, what is the difference between the first story when they heard the party of the Romans and Herakiva says if they have it good we'll definitely have it good and so but you know, no reply there whereas over here I said I see you know, that the, uh, the negative prophecies have been fulfilled so I know the positive prophecies are coming over here they uh, with this they're consoled and they say it twice Akiva Nicham Tanu Akiva Nicham Tanu Yeah, no. so we'll, we'll try to explain this. All right, the, um, so Rashi says, you know, we, uh, that, you know, Akev refers to mitzvah she'odam dosh ba'akevav, right? But on the other hand, we also find Akev refers to kola Torah kula. Akev asher shoma avram b'koli, vayishmor mishmarti chukosai mitzvosai v'sorosai, Right, uh, of course, who says to Yitzhak on beauty because Abraham, you know, because Akev, right? Akev, right, he kept, you know, he kept Kala right? Uh, right? How Abraham found out about the Torah, did it, how Abraham, the Torah is very clear, make a statement, uh, Abraham kept all those, uh, it's right, right. very simple. How is Abraham, before the time Torah, he know all the Torah Kula? Okay. He find it at his own. Oh well, some of it he figured out. Some of it, you know, there's a lashon chazal. Also, shtei kol yosef shol shtei kol shtei rabbanim vayum lamdus of Torah. Because who made his two kidneys like two rabbis and they taught him Torah, so it may have been what we call ruach hakodesh. Right. However, it happened. Um, <clears throat> right, right. Now that you know, what was the biggest test? You know that Avinu had to face the akeda. Right, so Akarjo says, "I'm, you know, it's, this is, uh, I'm going to bless you. I'm with you forever now." Ekev asher shamata bekoli, Ekev, right? Because you listen to me, and that's going on the Akeda. So it, it means kolatarakula. It means, you know, it means like a big, big nisayon, a big test like the Akeda. It also means the mitzvah shadam dash ba'akevav, right? How do you reconcile all these different meanings of the word Ekev, right? Uh, you know, another Lashon, Chazal Darshan Akev is Kufayim uh, Bey, 172. That's all of Ravon Vinu's life as a from Jew, right? Because the first three years he didn't know God. He lived 175 years. So his first three years he, uh, he didn't know any better, but at three years old he figured out the truth. So for 172 years, right, he was a God fearing Jew. So Akev means, you know, a lot of big stuff. It also means. Mitzvah Shalom Dash Ba Akeva, you know, how are we going to reconcile? means big things, it means small things. Truth is like this. The, uh, a question has to be raised. You know, let's, let's, um, 
let's get a little bit more disenchanted before we find some hope, right? The, uh, right, you know, we've been in Gullis now for almost 2,000 years. Uh, no end in sight, right? uh, uh, but one thing we do see, that the generations are getting smaller and smaller. Right? Uh, right, you know, we're not, you know, we don't have people like on what was, you know, before the Holocaust, and the Achorim are not like the Rishonim, and the Rishonim are not like the Gonim, and the Gorim are not like the Amoroim, who are not like the Tanoim, who are not like the Nevi'im. Right? You know, there's Yerida Sadoras. The generations are getting smaller and smaller. So a question could be raised like this. Right? If the greater generations couldn't fix up the situation and you know, have merit to have the Geula and the rebuilding base in Mikdash, how are we going to pull it off? Right? That's, uh, that's one question to have in mind. Right? But then there's, there's, there's another question over here. Right? The, um, right? the Pasuk says, Samchenu ki mos ini sanu, Shnos ra'inu ra. Akash who should make us happy, like the days of our oppression, like all those years that we saw bad things. Right? So the Ramchal, in his Mamar Agula, asked the following question. And he asked it already in his day, let alone that we're two, three hundred years down the line, there's not enough time and game left to play. Right? Because if Akash who has to give us Simcha, right? Like all the days of oppression. Right? And the whole world is going to last 6,000 years. Right? There, there's only 200 and some odd years left you know, in the game you know, uh, before it, it's all over. Right? And Chad uh, you know, it's. I always say, you know, you know well, climate change is real. It's real. It's just not happening fast enough because right? we need the polar caps to melt and the world to be flooded you know, within 200 some odd years. We need to be producing more gas emissions, right, to speed up the process. We're very behind schedule. If by the year 6,000, Chazal say that there's going to be water everywhere, right, right. so don't buy those Teslas. We, you, know, we, uh, you stick with gasoline and let's do it right. right. The, now, we, now we stop that in, the, in order of it's right. liter of water. In what? It's not water. liter of water. Not li what? It's not water. It's not supposed to be a new model. It's also me. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 as the world's being reconstructed, it says they hover over the water and they're just waiting the world to be rebuilt over the in course of the seventh millennium, right? Two point. You said uh, Hashem make a promise that after the Mabul of Noah, he will never break the Mabul, um, the flood. And one more thing: is there anything the Yid can do to stop the catastrophe? Why should why should the world be end? It's going to be happy. no. It has to end so we can move on. Yeah. So we. No, it, it's, 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 it's a happy ending, as we're right, trying to explain. Right. Happy ending, right? Uh, happy ending so we can move on, you know, we, uh, progress, you know, you know, get to a higher place, right? Um, right so there's how can a Kodesh Baruch Hu be Mekayim, Samchenu ki mosi inisanu, shnos ra'inu ra'a, if we've been in Golas for over 1,900 years, right? And there's only, you know, 200 some odd years left till the world ends. No, I mean, I mean that in the nicest possible way. You know, the I mean, see, you know, over, you know, so we could move on to the next chapter, right? The uh, right, it's another question to ask, right? So now there's another question, you know, all related. The uh, you know, we're, we're taught Chazal tell us that you know before someone is born, so he learns the whole Torah in his mother's womb with an angel, right? And then, you know, born, and then, you know, the Malch Bav is so so, so tro, al -piv, you know, gets hit on the mouth, and he forgets everything. You know, but that Torah that you were taught, right, that, 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 that's your portion, right? That's that everyone has his own unique portion in the Torah. That's what we've done. V'tzein chel keinu v'torah techa. Everyone has his unique portion in life, and we should be zochet that our unique portion in Torah should be manifest. So you, you go through your whole life, right, you know, engaged in recollection, right? Recollection, right? To get back your chilek and tardy or taught. So what did you gain? <laughs> what's, what's it all for? What did you gain? Right? Now the truth is, you know, it, it, there's a much more frightening thought, you know, you know that uh, you know, we know that the, the neshama, shenasatabi, tahorahi, you know, the neshama started off pure, you know, closing by Rebbe, 
Olav Shalom. Uh, I'm told he said he said you know uh, in his Birchas Hashachar Elokai Neshar Shenasata Be Tahora Hoisa right it was pure right uh, you know uh, you get a little bit dirty you know course of your lifetime right uh, right uh, you know like uh, <laughs> how have I you should leave this world as pure as you were born right and so you know what's it all for you know you know. Kuli hai v'ulai, you'll get back to where you started from if you're lucky. Right? So what's, you know, what's it all for? You know, you know, I, you're in danger of losing, that we understand. Danger of losing, right? Danger of not regaining what you lost. Right? So what's the point? That it's seemingly, seemingly, the best you can do is to get back where you started. All right, seemingly. All right. <clears throat> what are you gaining by that? Well, we, we, we got it. Right? Start right. over again? So that's, that, 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 that's, that's our question. That's our question. All right, so, uh, <clears throat> so now it's a very interesting, you know, very interesting Medrash Rabbah. At the end of the six days of creation, well, which we know the six days of creation are parallel to the sixth millennium, the six millennia of this world. Now that if plan A was that Olam Azeh would just be six days long, you know, if other Mauritian would have uh, kept the faith and not eaten from the tree, Shabbos wouldn't have just been Me'en but would have been Olam Abba Mamash, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, it would have been six days, and it's, you know, Yom Osha, Kelev Shanim Be'inecha, Kiyom Esmo, God to you, a thousand years is like one day. That's where it would have been. Like, you know, what's now thousands of years would have been condensed into single days. Six days, and the seventh millennium, Yeshavah's seventh day would have been connected. What for us is now the seventh millennium, Yom Shekulo Shabbos. All right, so at the end of the sixth day, which we know also represents the end of time, right? Because uh, Shabbos is, represents Olam Abba. So, by all the six days of creation, Baal Kim Kitov, Baal Kim Kitov, God's always good, God's always good, right? And there's two exceptions to that. Two exceptions. Right? Lo tov heyot adam levado. Not good for man to be alone. Right? Uh, that's the, that's the lo tov. Right? And then there's something else. Valkim es kol asher asa vihine tov maot. God saw everything created and it's very good. So there's one no good. That's man being alone. You know why that is. All right, because if you drink at a party, who's going to drive you home? All right. You guys are asleep. You guys are asleep. Anyway, the. <laughs> Right, uh, and we're going to get back to that in a second because these two are connected. No, that's some. That's you know, no comment. That's no comment, right? No comment. Doesn't say anything, right? Uh, not ra, not to, right? But the um, but it is related to what it says. at the end of six day. Valkim is kol asher asa tov maod. Very very bokeh yom hashishi vayichosh and then. Goes into Shabbos. Right? It's very good. All of a sudden, everything was just stam, good. Now, all of a sudden, it's very good. Right? So, the Medrash Rabbah discusses this on that Pasuk. And it says, Tov Zahaim. Tov Ma'od Zuhamisa. Good, that's life. Very good, that's death. Right? You know, in the yeshivas, they say, you know, in the famous Gemara, that, you know, Shana's achas mishishim shomisa, sleep is one sixtieth of death. So imagine how gishmak death must be, right? 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 The, but, but it's a medrash. Tov mod zu amisa. Tov ze yetzara tov. Tov maod ze yetzara. Tov ze ganeden. Tov maod ze gehenum. Amazing. All these things, all these, all the, what we call the bad stuff, that's the very good. You know, the good stuff is stam good. The bad stuff, that's very good. 
Let's hold on. All right. All right. <coughs> so, you know, the rabbi pointed out that on uh, Yom Hashani, right, on the second day of creation, there's no comment from God. You know, he, uh, he just he splits the waters. And there's no comment. He doesn't say, Baal Kim Kitov, doesn't say anything, right? Uh, so, the, uh, one of the shittas in the Medrash is because Yom Hashani got paid back. Uh, when Akashu said, Tov Ma'od, right? The Ma'od of Tov Ma'od goes back on Yom Hashani. That's, that was the payback. Because on Yom Hashani, all these bad things were created, right? All these bad things were created Yom Hashani. When God split the water, that splitting the first machloket, the first split, first chasm, you know, right? Uh, First, uh, you know, splintering of Maase Bracious. On that day, Machlokas was created. On that day, Gehenim was created. And all those things make up the Ma'od of Tov Ma'od. And the Medrash says another shot also on Tov Ma'od. Ma'od is Oisius Adam. Ma'od, same letters, you know, as Adam. Man. Tov Ma'od, Tov Adam. Tov Ma'od is also the bad stuff. Alluding to the, uh, the challenge of the human situation. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to read you a Gemara in Brachas, and then we'll uh, start taking these things full circle, uh, literally full circle. Gemara says in Brachas, Dav Ches, very interesting, on the Pasuk, Le'elzos Yispalo, Alzos Yispalo Ko Chosid, for this, every righteous man will dive into you. At the time of mitzvah, at the time of the finding, at the time of the finding. Right? Rabbi <coughs> Hanina says, Leis mitzvah, that refers to a woman. Davening for the time of the finding is mean to find a wife. Shanamar, Matza Isha, Matza Tov. He who finds a wife, you know, has found goodness. Right? The, uh, that's how Leis Mitzel, according to, is, is an Isha. Right? Rabbi Rasul Omer, Leis Mitzel, Zu Torah. No, Leis Mitzel, you know, the time of the find, the Mitzel refers to Torah. She Neymar, as the Pasuk says, Ki Motzei Motzechaim, those who find me have found life, and that refers to the Torah. Rabbi Yadachem Yitzel, Omer, Leis Mitzel, Zu Amisa. Leis Mitzel is death. Right? Shinamar la mavet totsaot. Right? So totsaot is the same root as matzah. Uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, the, uh, the, uh, Rav Yochanamar leis mitzo zu kvura. No, that's burial. Leis mitzo is burial. Um, Rav Yochanina, my kra, is makla gil yasisu ki yimotsu kever. To find the grave. So it's kvura. Right? Yeah, then there's, uh, you know, uh, there's one more shita that's, uh, you know, where I don't know if we're going to be able to uh, encompass this. Leis mitzo ze beisakise. It's finding a place to, you know, be able to answer nature's calls, right? Arivara ha de marzutra adifa mikulu. Right, actually, the, uh, the most preferred shot was that of marzutra. That's beisakise. Right? But I want to discuss the common denominator. It's, it's a wife. It's Tyra. It's death. It's burial. Huh? Now, you know, yeah. I can't say. I don't know. I'm not going to take responsibility for that. All right. Uh, the <coughs> stretching it. What? It's stretching it a little bit. Yeah. The, uh, The idea is like this, right? Uh, the Pesach says, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami. Double. Nachamu, Nachamu. Right? So the, um, you know, the, the Medrash, the Psikta says, you know, double, because we have to get double back from our Kurdish Baruch Hu. We have to get Kefo. Okay? So now, uh, as, as, as it seems apparent from the Medrash itself, but the Mephoshim further explain, you know, consolation is not just, okay, you know, the troubles are behind you. From this point onwards, it'll be good. That's not consolation. Right? It just means that the troubles are over. Cons- you know, consolation is that you have to somehow turn all the bad times into good. Now, just because, you know, 
you know, you're supposed to feel, you're, you, how about the guy who always had a good life? His life was always perfect. So what's the consolation for a guy, you know, that went through hard times? I mean, from, from this point onwards, it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, but there's some people who had it okay the whole way through. What's the consolation of that, that from this point onwards, it'll be better? Right? You really need, you know, to also, and aside from that, from this point onwards, it should be good, there's got to be some type of payback for the hard times. You know where we find this, you know, in Halacha? The din of kefel by Geneva. All right, uh, person steals something from you, you know, breaks into your house, and, uh, you know, Breaking robbery, Geneva. All right, so when we find the catch up to the crook, he pays double. He pays double. All right, and uh, you understand the justice in that. Because, you, know, uh, you know, getting your thing back, obviously, getting your thing back, it's mine. It's not his, it's mine, obviously. Yeah, but you also got to be compensated for the stress, for having it, you know, removed from you, and you had no idea where to find it. Now, it's a very interesting halacha, right, that, you know, uh, a mugger. Right? You know, the guy came up to you in broad day and you see, you know, who you're, you know, and he takes it out of your hand, right, and we, you call the cops, right, he doesn't pay careful. He doesn't pay careful, right, he just pays, gives you back the object, right, the guy who snuck into your house and took it, he pays careful. Why? Right? You think a mugger is much more brazen. Yeah, but there's a difference. The mugger you saw who took it from you. So because you so took it from you, you don't lose hope. You know, you know, you know who took it, right? You can, you know, call the cops and eventually get it back. The Ganav who snuck into your home, you don't know where it went. You know, so you feel like totally, you know, uh, hopeless. Hopeless, right? You're in a state of hopelessness, right? And that's where you have to get compensation for that. Right. When there was hope, you know, if you're, if you're not, you could be calm about it. It's just a matter of time. We'll catch up to him and we'll make him pay for his crime. Right. But, you know, the Ghanav, you don't know. And therefore, there's, a, you're, there's hopelessness. Right. And that's, that hopelessness needs to be compensated. So now the Pasuk says, Im hi motse, ti motse, biyado ha chayim shav. If it will be found, you'll find the Ghanav. Right. It's called hi motse, finding. Like lace mitzo, right? That you, you catch up to him, right? And you know, because the word matzah, what does the word mitzia mean? Mitzia comes out of nowhere, like a mitzia that you're allowed to keep. Mitzia is bob eschadas, because you know it came from. You have to do ashavas aveda, right? If you know where it came from, you have to return it to its rightful owner. Mitzia comes from nowhere. What's the root of the word mitzia? Matzah tse. It came out of nowhere. It was yotze. You know, uh, you could also say, you know, it also was Yotze from the Roshas of their Bailim, because they're Miyayish, comes out of nowhere. Right, the Geneva, he must say Timatse, because you didn't know where to find it. So when you, when you find the Ganev, it's like you found them out of nowhere, because you had no idea where it went. Right? <clears throat> so now, you know, the, uh, you know, and, and that, that's, that's the, and, and that's the consolation, that you're not just getting your thing back, but you're being compensated for the time you didn't have it. Right? And, that's, and that's the Nachama that the Rebosham intends to give us. Bimhera Biamenu. Right? Nachamu, Nachamu. That it's not just going to be good from this point on, onwards, but it's going to be Kefel. Right? There's also going to be a double payment that also the hard times that we had right, are going to be turned and converted into good. And we're going to explain in a moment how that's possible. You know, which what the Ramchal really addresses, Mamara Geula. <coughs> how we're going to get those days back. We're going to get that lost time back, Bezrat Hashem. And we'll explain how in a second. <clears throat> but the, uh, you know, going back to, you know, this Gemara in Brachas, Tavches, right? So he's about Torah, Isha, Misa, Kvura. All these things are called Eis Mitzo. So Torah, I'm going to get back to in just a second. But Isha, Misa, and Kvura, all in the same parsha. All in the same parsha. Chayesara, right? Chayesara, right? Besides so the fact that it's the story about how Ravinu, you know, buried his wife, 
but you know the story goes on that that's where Yitzhak finds Rivka. The whole story of the courtship, you know, between Yitzhak and Rivka is in that parsha, right? So that's a very interesting parsha. First shidduch, recorded shidduch in history, right? Yitzhak and Rivka was done formally sent sent Eliezer to negotiate, you know, the uh, you know the, uh, the future marriage, right? The uh, and it's the first Leviah in history also, you know. All the 2,000 years of world history, until then, we have Parshas Bracious, Noach, Lechacha, you know, Vayera, just as people drop dead. Stam says, Vayomas, yeah, just drop dead. Da, 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 right? First time that there's an honor, there's a eulogy, and a proper, you know, a Leviah, and a proper burial, is in Parshas Chayesor. Avram Vinu was the first one, right? He bought her, looked for a good grave, right? And he, you know, and he put her away in an honorable way, right? And, and right after that, you know, is the story of, uh, you know, sending Eliezer to find uh, Rivka. And it's also said, you know, to further the connection. You know, what's the number one way? You know, everyone knows the first Mishnah and Kiddushin. You can marry a woman in three ways, Kesef, Shtar, and Bia. What's the number one way that we do it? Kesef, right? Right? So where do we learn that out from? Kicha, kicha, miste Ephron. Right? No, no, Shava. Got Nasati Kesef Asada Kachmimeni by Ephron when he bought the Maras and Achpela, right? And, right, and the uh, Xerosh of that to Ki Yikach Ish Isha. Ki Chok Ki Chom Mr. Ephron. Right? 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 Because, because, right. because the common denominator between all these things, right, is that, you know, you know, your wife, your other half, you don't know where to find her. Right? You know, God made her for you. You got no idea where to find her. So it's Lais Mitzo. Right? That's like that's like the biggest miracle what God has been doing, busy with ever since he created the world is Mizavik Zivugim. That's what he's been busy with. Right? All right. Yes. All right, whatever. We're just talking generally speaking. All right? All right, so you know, you know, you don't know where to find her. And of course, Baruch it's matza isha matza tov, right? You know, so you, a person might think, you know, it's you know, he's he's just half a human being, and it's hopeless, and it comes out of nowhere, right? But here's the thing: death and burial, right? You feel you lost the body, you lost life, and the body you lost it, you put it in the ground, right? But it's not really, you will find it again by Trias right? You know, the, uh, you know, the body will come back, you know, so death. Yeah, yes, it, but it comes back better because it goes into the grave tainted with a Yetzirah and when by the resurrection, by Trias Hameisim, it comes reconstructed only with good matter and no bad matter and that's why that body is built to last and could absorb the entirety of the neshama and live forever. Right? So you thought that you lost the body, and just the opposite, you're going to get it back better than the way you put it away. Because you put it away as a mortal body, you know, with the, uh, with the weaknesses of the flesh, and that's why the body couldn't last forever. Tainted by the chet of Adamarishan. The way you get it back, you get back the same body, but improved. Right? Right and and but you know but it's it's just it's it's hard for us to see you know you know to see how it's going to go full circle because it's really and that's the point I want to get to because it's not a straight line it's going circular right it's like it's an about face it goes down to the ground but then comes back up again you know we could see straight line straight line thinking straight you know just like we could see down the straight you can't see it around corners our mind works the same way we could calculate linearly. You know, and, and be good with whatever we calculate linearly. This is a curveball. That all that, that, you know, from, that from the depth of it, from the depth, right, comes back up. Bounce back. Right? It goes around. Right? The neshama has already been assigned. Right? Right? Excuse me? The neshama has been assigned already from one part to another part. To a, to a new uh, a, 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 a new creation, a new child, a new. He's talking about Gilgul. Oh, he said about Gilgul. The Gilgul. Oh, all the Gilgulim come back, all of them, Is all of them. They're going to expand on it. What? Yeah, every time it inhabits a body, it builds up new strength. That by the reason I can animate that body plus that body plus 
the mitzvahs that it did in that body gives it new strength. Which comes to the question, you know, so le'es mitzvah, right? Le'es mitzvah is Torah, right? So we, we ask the question, they taught you the Torah already in your mother's womb, then they made you forget it, right? So seemingly, what, uh, the best you can do is to get back to where you came from. So what's the point? Right? No. Right? Because you build up new energies facing all the challenges to recall that Torah. So when you get back, you will get, we are destined to get all that Torah back. Even what a person, you know, if, if a person, if a person not, I'm not talking about if a person goofed off. If a person did the best he can. Was not Zohar to recollection of all the Torah. They was told him, he will get that Torah back, but he also gets new divine energies for all the trying and all the toil to recollect that Torah. So it actually deals with this gentleman's question. If you're in multiple Gilgulim, right, how, how are you going to, by the resurrection, one neshama for all these different bodies? Yes, because every time it faced challenges in that body, the struggle to recollect the Torah through Amelos, right, the struggle against the Yetzirah, Sahara builds up new spiritual energies that he didn't have before because of those challenges, and those new spiritual energies makes a whole new branch for the neshama that it can animate that body in addition to its original body and in addition to the next body it inhabits when it does mitzvahs and is omed benisyonos in that goof. So it comes out that we're going to get everything back plus, right, plus build new spiritual energies because we face these challenges. Right? So it's called, called that he mut, le'es mitzo, like he mutz, it's about to go, you get it all back and you get kefo, you're going to get double, you're going to get everything back, plus, you know, new energies because of having faced the challenges and, you know, and uh, stood up to these challenges, whether you overcame them or whether you just went through them with a great deal of bitachon that it'll work out, that's also a type of work. So we said it's all in Parshas Chaye Sora. And it's all in the context of the acquisition of a place called Ma'oras Hamachpela, Kefo, getting double, getting double. Right? That's the lesson taught. That death is, you know, you know we're going to get that body back, plus, right? plus, you know, in a, in a higher form, that it'll be worth it that it died, because that way it could be reconstructed just with good matter, and the bad matter is smelted out. So that's the message, Ma'oras Hamachpela, we're going to get Kefo. We get double, right? You get double. <clears throat> yes. Who? My brother. Oh, you got to patch up things with your brother. Well, you got to patch things up between them. You got to have a reconciliation. No, yes, it could. And, uh, but not now. I mean, well. You'll deal with it when it happens. Yeah. Uh, I'm worried about it right now. Anyway, the uh, <clears throat> so now you understand what it means. Tov mode, very good. All the bad things are very good. Now, because the good that God gave already during the six days of creation, that's good. That's the God created good. The what? The, but you know, very good means that there is new goodness. The new goodness is produced by our facing off with the evil, and because we face off with evil, overcoming it, and the things that we don't overcome, at least we face it with bitachon, that, that it's all from God and it's all for the good, which is also a form of work, taking it, you know, with faith, or let alone if you overcome it, all right? So, you know, that, 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 that facing off the evil converts the evil to goodness, adds the evil onto the goodness, annexes it, and makes tov, tov mode, because all the bad things produce new divine lights, mikoach, the fact that the work that we did by facing off with it. Right? And that's Adam, that's man's mission. Tov mode, tov Adam, that's man's mission. Man's mission, that's what man was created to do, to face off with the evil and to make new divine lights out of that face off. So you're going to get everything that you had back, right? Plus, plus, you know, all the struggle produces divine energy that builds up and expands your chelak olamaba more than just the chelak that you were born with. Besod kol yisrael shem chelak olamaba, right? And you will get new insights in Torah. You will understand the Torah deeper when you get back to 
you know, Gan Eden than the way you understood it before you were born. Because you have new spiritual reserve, new spiritual energies to have a deeper penetration of your chilek and Torah that you have not had, never having been born and never having to face these challenges that build your spiritual muscles. So you have a deeper appreciation of your chilek and Torah after having gone through all the challenges, right, that you could not have had prior to that. Right, the, um, you know, the, the Magid told the Beis Yosef that the... Um, I believe it's Zohar, right, that the, the Neshamas that are unborn, that they learn Torah, you know, in heaven, they still can't face, they can't look the Shekhinah in the face. They're embarrassed. They never did anything to earn their existence. It's all just granted. It's charity. Right? It's only after the Neshama has gone, lived, and faced challenge, when we go back, you can look the Shekhinah in the face. So you have everything you had plus, right? You get kefal, right? So the, but here's the thing, right? You know, there's, you know, uh, so you got to understand two things over here, right? That the, uh, first of all, life is a loop, right? Now, we, we don't see it that way, and we don't think that way. We think that, you know, time is, is linear, you know, you know, 1997, 1998, 1999, right? It never occurs to us that actually time is really a loop, right? Uh, because Kodem Shabra Ulamo Hayahu Shmo Echad, before God created the world, Pekar Lazar says, it was just him and his divine name. What does it say in the future? Bayomahu Ye Hashem Echad U Shmo Echad. Right? We're moving back to, you know, the world is actually getting back to where it started from. Right? And the same, th- and, and the, uh, you know, the. Right? This is with the, with the Malachim. What? This is with the Malachim, uh, tiny of the Malachim, that, that B'nai Yisrael was being created? Was this brought? Right, right. You know, they don't know why, why we deserve it, right? But you have to realize that, 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 you know, really, it's all a big loop. It's not a straight line. It's a loop, right? All right you know, it, it's already, you know, programmed in the cosmos that it, we have to make it to Mashiach, we have to make it to Tchias Reis, and we have to make it to Olam Abba, which is really to bring the world back to God, where it came from. It's one big loop. Right? Uh, where Atif uh, should connect it to Rosh. That's right. Excellent. Right? right? It's a loop. Right? And, and, and that's why everything that there ever was is going to come back again. And that's what, you know, the Leshem says, Tchias Amesim, you know, you know, you know what it is? It's basically everything that was comes back again. That's what Tchia is. Life is one big loop, right? Now the loop, you know, where, like the gentleman said, it ends where it started. Right? And that's why everything that there ever was is all going to come back, right? 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 Except that it's not going to be getting back to the same place because all the challenges that you faced along the way, right, is new energies, so you've got to get back to where you started from, plus those new energies that you picked up along the way. But here's the catch. You've got to be on the train till the end. You've got to make it all the way, you know, you know destiny. It's, it's a loop, right? But you've you got to be you know, on the destiny train till the last stop, till the last stop. Right? All those nations, all those civilizations that ceased to exist, they, you know, got off the train. You got off, so they were just there for the ride. They're off the train, they're off the train. You know, uh, right? you stick with the train till the end. You have everything that the train is hauling. Plus, you know, whatever you gain through the challenges that you faced along the way. Right? That's what it means. Right? You know, the... Uh, that's what it means, that when Yaakov was holding Esau's heel, right? Yaakov was holding Esau's heel, right? So, uh, you know, it's say, call him Yaakov. He's the heel, right? right? Say that, so Rashi says, cause Bale ligmor malchuso, he wanted to finish his kingdom. Meaning to be, say like this, that the Roman Empire, Golos Edom, the Golos that we're still in now, the Golos of Western civilization, Right, uh, you know, he wants to be the last word in destiny. He wants to make it to the end. He's not going to make it to the end. 
only we make it to the end. The Akev, the end is by us. We're the ones who make it to the end. The ones who make it to the end also get back to the beginning. It's a loop. It ends where it starts. But you have to be on the train till the end. Ad Hasof. Ad Hasof, you get back to the beginning. Right? Just, and that's, you know, that's the, uh, what the Maral says. You know, well, one of the outstanding uh, nations of Edom is Amalek. Reshit Goyim Amalek v'acharisa ade Oved. Bilam says about him. He's the first of Monk's nations, a, a competitor, a real competitor for Yisrael Shnikru Reishis. And I think we spoke about it once. That's why we have a mutually exclusive uh, adversarial relationship, both competing for first place. There's only one first place. But Acharisa ade Oved. He has no end. You know, he ends in oblivion. As opposed to our name, says the Maral, Yisrael, we end off by the name of God. We make it till the end. You know, the world's destined, it started from God, and it's, the, everything's going to go back to God. Everything that he created, you know, everything, it's all, you know, as it were, the Bria has been expanding, seemingly expanding universe, moving away from its origin, and moving away from the Creator. It's all destined to go full loop back to the Creator. In Olam Abba, everything is, you know, Zashem Kivinulo, Nagil Vis Machabi Shu also, everyone just everything just faces God. You know, everything's gotta go, but you gotta be on that train till the end. Right? Yeah, that's what it means. Yaakov takes the end away from Aesop. He's not gonna be there at the end. So even though even though throughout most of world history, right, of the six thousand years, let's say the Roman Empire, Western Society, they had it good. We had it bad. Right? We had, you know, we People have been through some hard knocks, but makes no difference. The question is, who's there at the end? That's the question. Whoever's there at the end has everything, plus he gets paid for all the challenges he went through. They're not going to be there at the end. The Akev, the end is by us. So it's an amazing thing. The end is, you know, you know if I would ask you geometrically, how big is the end point? How big is the end point? How big is the finish line? Infinitesimally small, because you cut that line into half and cut that line into half. Infinitesimally small, at right, the point that's called the finish. Like the heel, smallest part of the human being. Right? Yeah, you know, infinitesimally small, but it makes all the difference in the world. Because if you cross that finish line, you're in Olam Abba. You don't cross that finish line, you're not in the eternal world. All the other civilizations, they get off the train of destiny before the end. And when you get off the train, you're off the train, so you don't have what you had. You just enjoyed the ride. It was just a ride, but you're not with the train anymore, right? You're off the train, right? So everything you had was just, it was just a good time for temporary, right? Amisol sticks with the train till the end. That means you have all the days that make up that train of destiny. Amisol has all the days, plus getting paid for the trials and travails that they faced during. Right? <clears throat> so that's why Ekev can mean something small, right? Mitzvah Shonam Dosh Ba'akevav. It can also mean everything. Big Nisyonis, it can mean Kol Torah Kula, and it's not a contradiction, because the Nikuda, that the last point is called the end, you know, infinitesimally small, and, and it could be that the last thing you need to do is one small mitzvah, just one small mitzvah, right? And, and if you didn't do that once, you had not crossed the finish line. So it could be something infinitesimally small. But it's everything. When you cross the finish line, you've taken all the days of Olam Hazel with you. You didn't get off the train. You took the whole train with you into the eternal world. Right? So you complete the loop, right? plus getting paid for all the hard times you went through. Right? But you've got to make it you know, till the end. And that's the special destiny of the Jewish people. We're the ones who are going to make it to the end. The Akev is by us. By Akev Tishmun. We're going to make it to the Akev. We're going to have it basof, and that's why we're going to have schar mitzvah in Olam Abba. They won't. The one who makes it to the end has everything, no matter how bumpy the ride was along the way. The people who don't make it to the end, they got off the train of destiny. They have nothing. They're off the train. So just called that they had a good ride, but none of them is bets and theirs. They got off the train. We ride the train till the end, right? the train of destiny. So we have the whole train, we have all those years, all those years, plus getting paid for the hard times. Right? And that's really what the Ramchal says, that all the divine lights of all these years of ghosts that were seemingly hidden from us, 
because we are in a state of Hester upon him, all those divine lights come back. And really, Akasha will pay us back. Because all the divine lights of those days, they aren't lost. They're going to come with us into the next, with us, accompany us in the next world. Right? He also talks about that there could be something as, you know, double time. That uh, even if Mashiach, you know, has, let's say, a 10-year empire, God forbid, it should come immediately, right? But of course, could double over a lot of divine lights that should have spread over many years. He could condense those divine lights, you know. You know, you know we, have, we have this once a year, Aser Simei Tshuva. The Svarim say, Aser Simei Tshuva, you relive the whole last year. And that's why you could fix last year. And every, work it out, it means every day of Aser Simei Tshuva is worth 35 days. It's condensed time. Right? That's also a possibility, but it means those divine lights aren't lost. So God gives it to us in a condensed form. We take those divine lights with us into the next world. The point is to make it to the finish line. Make it to, and if you make it to the finish line, you could see how all the tough times were there for your own good. The people who don't make it to the finish line, the tough times are just stomped the tough times. Because I never made it to the end of the story, where the whole thing flips, and you see how it was all for your good. They don't see the whole vinah fochu, because they don't make it to the end. You've got to complete the circuit. You've got to complete the circuit. Only Amiso has the Akev. Right? So now Yaakov, you know, in his own days, went from being called Yaakov to Yisro. He went from Akev, heel, to Rosh, to head. Right? Yaakov, you know, in his lifetime, represented making the holes, and that's why Bikesh Yaakov Leishev Beshalva, he thought he was like in Olam Abba in his own lifetime, but Akosha said, no, no, you know, there's still work to be done, even if you have your personal perfection, you went full circle in your life, the world still needs, you know, there's to, you have to fix the world if you fix it yourself. But there's someone that remained at the heels, Rebbe Akiva, Rebbe Akiva, he remained Bebchinas Ekev, and that's what the Shlach Karish says, that Rabbi Yaakov became Yisro, Rosh. So it says by the serpent, you know, Veva Oshis, you know, uh, you know, between the children of uh, the woman and, and the serpent, who Yeshuv Harosh, he gets you by the head, right? And that's how Yaakov that became a Rosh, he creamed the eight Malch Vesav. Va'ata Teshufenu Akev, but you, the snake, you could get him at the heels. And that was Mekuyim, Rachmatzan, and by Rabbi Akiva, that the Roman Empire killed him. And Rabbi Akiva represents the Akev, you know, the heel, right? But Rabbi Akiva was the one, he and his Talmidim, and we explained this once, right, were the ones that fashioned, you know, codified the Torah Shabbal Peh, gave us the whole Mishnah, Tosefta, Safra, Sifrei, Kulu, Stimas, Alibid, Rabbi Akiva, they made the Torah Shabbal Peh, they codified it and they organized it, that it should last until the end of time. What's the end of time called? Ikvisa the Mashiach, the heels of Mashiach, right? And that's how we should not, you know, and you know, Chazal talk about how the ikvus of the Mashiach at the heels of Mashiach. The end of the time, they call it ikvus of Mashiach. When we're going to be mamish akevayim, that we're going to, you know, if our earlier generations were like the head, you know, they were like the head. We're like the heels, you know, of, of Am Yisrael. We're mamish the lowest of the low, right? Right? But it makes no difference. It's up to us to hang tight, to complete the revolution, to complete the circuit. Right? And from Ikvasar Af- Mashiach goes straight into Yemos HaMashiach. Rabbi Akiva, his whole life work was to provide that it should make it Ad Ikvasar Mashiach, until the heels of Mashiach. And that's his whole way of thinking. He, he doesn't see, you know, he doesn't see the here and now. He always sees the future. He's always, he's not thinking here and now. He always thinks ahead. He always thinks ahead. So going back to the stories, you know, Meseches Makas. So first, you know, they saw Kol Hamula Shoromi, right? You know, they uh, heard, you know, the big, big party. And Rabbi Akiva says, right, he's, he's laughing. I'm thinking Olam Abba. If, if they have such a good time in Olam Azeh, our Olam Abba must be something awesome. Because they went against God's will and they have it good. Imagine what our Lama look. He's looking at Olam Abba, he's not looking at Olam Azeh. But they don't respond. Right? Because that's no consolation. That's no consolation. So it'll be good in Olam Abba. You know, and the scar that's waiting for us is much bigger than all the pleasure these Goyim get. But what about now? What about now? 
So Rabbi Kiva, I understand, you're thinking future, we're thinking now. And there's no consolation for the here and now. But then in the second story, Rabbi Kiva says, you know, the negative prophecies are inextricably bound up with the positive positive prophecies. You can't have the good times without the bad times. You need the bad times to make the tov ma'od. So the here and now, when you have a future perspective on the here and now, you realize that the here and now is also for the good. Oh, that's it. now you're saying good. And you say, Akiva nichamtanu, Akiva nichamtanu. Akiva, we hear where you're coming from. You're thinking akev. You're thinking the end. You're thinking future vision. Right? And now, and in future vision, there is the Nachamu Nachamu, right? The Kefo, Akiva Nichamtano, Akiva Nichamtano, that the concession will be double, right? That not only good times are coming and it'll be good from that point onwards, but also all the bad times, we'll see how they were all for our benefit, and all the bad times will turn. Will be Nehefach Litov, Akiva Nichamtano, Besod Nachamu Nachamu Ami, because Akiva. Akev, oh yeah, Akev Tishmon, right? That we have to realize to have special Jewish people is that we're the nation that makes it to the end. All the other civilizations, they had a good ride, but that's all they had. They had a good ride, and they're going to get off the train before the end of time. They're not going to be Gomer Malchusam. We, the end is by us. That means it's, we're the ones who finish the ride. That means the whole train is by us, plus we're going to get paid for how it was a bumpy ride along the way. Bimhera Biyamim.